tripods. Love them or hate them, we generally have to use them. And so I've had a, a long journey over the years trying to find the right tripod for my needs. Now, I have had some problems because, well, I'll come to that in a minute. Let's get into the video. <laughs> Hi, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean from Stuff In My Studio, and here hopefully we'll have a little bit of something for everybody, showing affordable and creative solutions to otherwise more expensive problems that you can face when you're a creator of any kind. Today, we're gonna to be looking at tripods. And as I said in the intro, it's always been a problem with tripods, for me anyway, because I haven't had the money to go out and spend crazy money on big old Manfrotto's or, or whatever else. So I've tried to do a bunch of things to make that sort of whole experience a bit more affordable but a bit more reliable. One of the most annoying things about tripods for me is that the majority of ones, particularly the affordable ones, are super lightweight. Like we all go out backpacking and, and need carryable um, lightweight tripods to come with us. I don't, I literally never have. So there's a lot of us out there that work in that kind of home environment or studio environment. And so you want something that's easily movable, that's, that's weighty enough to be solid and that does what you need it to do. This, I think, is that solution. A couple of tripods just to sort of give you an idea about the sort of issue that I've had. Um, I've had this one from, I got this one from Amazon Basics uh, years ago. And this was this has been a little superstar of a tripod, to be fair. Um, however, the footprint on it is massive. Now, when I bought this, this was quite inexpensive for what it is, but it had a trigger grip on the top of it. And that trigger grip was a nightmare because however you held it and then put it in the angle you wanted it and then released your trigger, um, it would always, 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 always just fall off just a little bit, which was a gigantic pain in the bum. So I managed to find one of uh, one of these Manfrotto three-way heads uh, on eBay. It was secondhand and I thought I'd give it a go to uh, to see if it'd work on this one. And indeed it did. However, to get the uh, to get the trigger off, I had to really go at it with a hammer and all sorts of things to try and uh, to try and get it off. And in the end, it just meant that the top was wobbly, so I had to glue the tripod head onto onto the top of this. Now it does work, and so for some product photography, uh, historically this is what I've tended to graduate towards. However, um, it does have a, a very wide footprint. Although there's a, a, a little bit of weight to it, which is what I like because I'm always in the studio. And most importantly for me, it's got the central column that can move up and down. The other issue with this particular tripod was the fact that with these clasps that you use to um, make the legs go in and out, you have to tighten them up constantly and they're just a bit of a pain in the ass. So yeah, this wasn't an ideal solution, although it's one that I tended to go back to time after time, uh, just because it's allowed me to uh, to do what I want more or less. But like I said, the footprint on it has made it just a bit of a nightmare. Feeling a bit flash one day, I went and bought a Benro. And this is, I don't know which model this one is. Does it say on it? Nope, of course it doesn't. Oh yes it does. This is the Aero 2. Now, this is a little bit light, um, but uh, it's, it's certainly not carbon fiber super light. But the problem with this one was that the central column, and I should have taken this back to the shop, but the central column, you undo the middle and to try and get that out is next to impossible. It just, it just doesn't work. I've taken it to Bart to try and fix it, could not understand why, and it was just an absolute big nightmare. So I didn't like that at all. Um, add to that a couple of other challenges that I found with this tripod, and it wasn't for me. And so this one, as I said, should have gone back to Wex where I bought it. However, um, it ended up just going into the back of my closet, and that's where it stayed. 
This brings me to another one. Now this is a video tripod. It's got these three legs so you can undo it, slide them down. And once again, this is lovely and stable. There's a bit of weight to it. And that's something that I think is super important because I'm not outside carrying this around with me. So what I wanted was a, a, a tripod that's nice and solid that I'm not gonna knock over every two seconds. And that uh, that is a solid, stable base for my camera. Um, this does a fantastic job and it's great, but once again, once we've got the legs extended, it's a super wide footprint um, and it doesn't have an extending column in the middle. And so that means that you have to um, kind of mess around to, uh, to, to, to get the height you want. And you guarantee that you'll kind of extend the legs and think, oh, I've got to go an inch higher. And then it's just all manner of faff to, to get it and then re-leveling out the camera and all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know whether it comes across on camera, but I actually, on all of the legs, I actually mark one inch markers on everything. So when I put the legs out, um, I can have everything on 16 or something like that. So I know that all of the legs are the same height. And that's certainly a little hack that uh, that I would suggest doing because it's it's been very, very helpful. However, like I said, not the most adjustable in the world without that central column. Um, although it does have a central piece here that we can spin around. I'll put the links to all of these down in the description. So if you, if you like the look of any of these, these ones, then um, there will be an affiliate link down, down in the bottom. You don't have to pay any more, but it does help the channel out. So what is my overall solution? Well, it's not actually a tripod. <laughs> so I was looking for um, creative solutions. I was, I was even thinking about going for a C-stand because if I'm using a large C-stand, that can more or less stay in the same place and then I can extend the arm and get it to whichever angle or whatever that I wanted. However, still you're a little bit stuck into uh, where it can go and what it can do. So that again, isn't an ideal solution. All right, so let's have a little look and show you what I'm doing and then I'll break it down in a moment. But uh, I'm using it on my camera right now. So let's switch to some B-roll uh, so you can see it. This is a newer lighting stand. It looks a little bit C-standy, but it's nowhere near as heavy duty. There's still a little bit of weight to it, but nothing that's uh, that's gonna really make you cry when you have to move it. However, I have at the bottom of this got some uh, newer wheels, which is a little trolley thing, or a little dolly rather, that you can attach to anything from C-stands to tripods to, to whatever you fancy. Now, I think this is absolutely fantastic. It's really, really useful in my little studio. Now, on top of that, I've got a, uh, just a cheapo ball head going on. Because I do a lot of product photography, I needed to shield the stainless steel so it doesn't bounce back any flashes or any lights that I'm using. And that meant that uh, while they had a black one, I believe available on Amazon or on Amazon, it wasn't available when I ordered this one and I'm super impatient. So I ordered this. And then my solution to that, to stop the bounce back, was to use some Velcro material cable trunking stuff. So you can get this in a big old roll for next to nothing and everyone's a winner. So why do I think this is the perfect solution? Well, I think that the fact that it's on wheels means that it's super easy for me to move around my little studio. It's uh, not got a huge footprint, which is fantastic. Unlike a tripod like this one, you haven't got these super wide legs just getting in the way whenever you want to um, get your recording done and be able to see what's going on in the camera. So that makes life a lot easier as well. It's also got obviously an extendable center column so I can go up as high as I like and every one's a winner. Now, because we've got the, uh, the the wheels on the bottom, it adds a little bit more stability to the uh, to the the tripod anyway, uh, or the light stand anyway. However, you can also easily put sandbags or whatever on top of that as well, and still be able to move it around. If you want to, you can easily attach an arm on the top of it to be able to get some top down shots if that's the sort of thing that you need. But all in all, I find this really really useful. And the most important thing is it, you don't buy all in one go. You don't have to buy it all in one go. It's very affordable considering and all of the sections can be used for other things. So um, while it does cost just under a hundred quid, I think, to get the whole thing all together, um, you don't have to buy it all in one go. And as I said, every every part of it from the, the wheels to the to the light stand itself, to the cable trunking, to the, to the ball head, you can use on other items as well. And I think that is so useful. I'm all about finding the 
affordable gear that you can use for more than one thing. It really is a sort of a, a bit of a jack of all trades. Is this absolutely perfect and to rival a brand spanking new Mega Man Frodo heavyweight thing? No, of course it's not. But this is absolutely my favorite tripod to use in this studio. And it's absolutely my favorite affordable solution to all of the problems that I'd had recently. You can even lock the wheels so you don't have to have it piddling around all over the place. That, even that makes life easier. Putting it together is super easy. All you've got to do is extend the legs on the dolly. Make sure that you've undone the sections where the tripod legs go in. Pop your tripod on it, extend the legs out as far as you want them to go. Tighten everything up. Pop your ball head on the top. Then pop your cable trunking around the outside of it. And wallop, there you go, job done. How easy is that? It's just, it's just one of those things that makes my life so, so simple. And I love it because of that. And like I said, if I want to take the dolly off and use it on a C stand, or I want to use it on another stand, I can. If I want to take the, um, if I want to take the, the ball head off and use it on another tripod, I can. If I wanted to add uh, an extended arm on the top of it, again, not a problem. It's super easy. It's not too invasive in my space and it just works out really well for me. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it something uh, to give you a little bit of food for thought as to how you approach tripods and so on in your studio. Let me know down below if this was helpful for you. And also if you've not checked out any of the other videos, please do check them out on the, on the channel and make sure you hit the subscribe and little bell. That certainly helps out a small growing channel like this one and it'd be very much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great day and keep on creating. Thank you.